John Simpson Kirkpatrick, also known as the Man with the Donkey, was a prominent figure during the Gallipoli Campaign. He served with the 3rd Australian Field Ambulance and used his donkeys to help his fellow soldiers during the offensive. By the end of the First World War, he and his donkeys had become almost legendary figures. John Simpson Kirkpatrick was born on July 6, 1892 in County Durham, England. He began working with donkeys as a youngster on his summer holidays, a skill that would place him in good stead in the years to come. When he turned 16, Kirkpatrick volunteered as a gunner for the Territorial Force, before joining the British Merchant Navy in 1909. When his ship was docked in New South Wales, Australia in May 1910, he deserted his crew and took odd jobs around the country. After the First World War broke out in 1914, Simpson enlisted in the Australian Army, in part to return to England. On his forms he declared himself to be John Simpson, likely dropping Kirkpatrick to make it difficult for officials to identify that he deserted his ship years prior. John Simpson Kirkpatrick signed up as a field ambulance stretcher bearer in Perth on August 23, 1914, and trained at Black Boy Hill Training Camp. He was then assigned to the 3rd Australian Field Ambulance, Regimental No. 202, and served with them throughout his time overseas. The group took part in the Gallipoli Campaign, landing at Anzac Cove on April 25, 1915 as part of the 1st Australian Division. Kirkpatrick quickly started carrying injured soldiers from the front lines to receive medical attention. On April 26, he began using a donkey to transport the wounded servicemen, becoming a common sight on the front lines. He sang and whistled while he and his donkey walked along the battlefield. Duffy the donkey is perhaps the best known of John Simpson Kirkpatrick's donkeys, but sources indicate he likely had multiple, or... At the very least, different nicknames for the same one, Duffy No. 1, Duffy No. 2, Murphy, Abdul and Queen Elizabeth. Some of the other stretcher bearers began using donkeys alongside Kirkpatrick, as it made it easier to move the injured over the terrain and away from the front lines. General John Monash highly praised his actions, saying, Private Simpson and his little beast earned the admiration of everyone at the upper end of the valley. They worked all day and night throughout the whole period since the landing, and the help rendered to the wounded was invaluable. Simpson knew no fear and moved unconcernedly amid shrapnel and rifle fire, steadily carrying out his self-imposed task day by day, and he frequently earned the applause of the personnel for his many fearless rescues of wounded men from areas subject to rifle and shrapnel fire. John Simpson Kirkpatrick's dedication to the wounded was short-lived, as he was killed in action during the third attack on Anzac Cove on May 19, 1915. He was only 22 years old. Sources indicate Kirkpatrick was struck by a machine gun bullet that traveled through his heart. Reports also state that the donkey he had with him that day was spared from the same gunfire, with his comrades continuing to look after the animal. The commanding officer of the 21st Kohat Indian Mountain Battery wrote, Simpson had many donkeys and men killed beside him but led a charmed life till May 19th. We treasured his last donkey and evacuated it safely at the end with a view to presenting it to Australia but it was stolen from our mule lines in Madros. Other sources say that one of Kirkpatrick's donkeys was passed along to Lieutenant Richard Alexander Henderson of the New Zealand Medical Corps a man often confused as Simpson in images from the Gallipoli campaign. In just over three weeks of service, John Kirkpatrick Simpson became a legendary figure, credited with saving 300 men during his time at Gallipoli. It has been noted that only those with minor wounds could have been transported on Simpson's donkey, while those with more serious injuries to the head or chest would not have been able to. Despite not receiving the Victoria Cross he was nominated for, Simpson's legacy lives on through numerous memorials, portrayals in films and television shows, and even on postage stamps.